You know what? Mine is bigger than yours. No, really. If this is yours, this is mine. All right? So I thought, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I thought it would be fun to do an interesting fountain pen shootout with the two monstrous pens. The Namiki Emperor versus the Denitrio Genkai. These are two very big pens and I think I have reviewed them separately so you can watch a full-on review but I thought it would be interesting to show, sort of uh, show them off side by side so I'm going to point the camera down. It's a little easier to show the pens that way. Let's do that. I will do a writing sample and we'll talk a little bit about what I like about both of these pens and what I maybe don't like so much about them. So let's do it. Okay, so side by side, we have on top the Namiki Emperor, and then below that, below that, the um, Denitrio Genkai. And when I say large pens, I'm I'm not kidding. Here's a Lamy Safari. These are large pens. So if I take, for example, this Namiki Emperor cap, and I put it next to the pen that is the Lamy Safari, you see the point. I'm trying to convey here. Okay, these are big pens. And let's dive straight into it. They're also expensive pens. The current street price for the Namiki Emperor is 2000 US. Uh, this one is a bit special because it's um, it has the old style nib, which as I understand it was a little springier than the modern nibs. So this one would probably be around that price, maybe a little more now, depending on where you find it. You can also see that this one has discolored a bit, right? Because when it's Urushi and when this was launched, it was this color, okay? So it's been lovingly used, as they say. I don't mind that, I think it's kind of fun. But there is that. Then you have the Denitrio Genkai, which as you can see is a very similar size, right? It may seem a little bigger. I think that's mainly in the cap. Once you uncap both pens, and I'll come back to the caps, you will see that both of these are pretty similar in size. Maybe not identical in size, but pretty similar in size. The biggest difference is the nib. The Namiki uses the Pilot Namiki number 50 nib. They have their own numbering system. The Denitrio Genkai uses a Bok number 8 nib. So it is quite a big nib, but this is a massive pen, so it looks like a pretty normally sized nib, but it is number 8, 8 millimeter diameter of the feet, so that's quite large. The Namiki Emperor, huge. This nib is massive, massive, massive nib. Um, and this is a, a 18 carat, okay? Just like on the, the Nitrio. Okay, so what are some of the, the outstanding features of both pens that I think are worth pointing out? Both of them use a one-way shut-off valve to fill the pen. So that means that to fill the pen you unscrew the section. There's a, a piston and a valve in here which you can open up. This valve closes off an ink chamber there. And this way you get a good ink flow, right? Now if you want it a bit drier you can close it up a bit more. If you want it a bit wetter you can open it up. Now don't expect magic. Some people think that it goes from a super dry writer to a gusher. I have never really noticed that much of a difference. The difference is that if you write with it like this, at some point it'll run dry because that valve shuts off the ink flow, okay? You fill up the entire barrel with an eyedropper. That means that both of these pens have a large ink capacity, a large ink capacity. Uh, these will not run dry uh, anytime really soon. So there is that. Both of the pens, well, no, actually, I should not say that. I, th I used to think that uh, the Denitrio has an ebonite feed. Uh, that's because, as I said, it's a, um, a Bok number 8 nib, and Bok number 8 nibs traditionally come with an ebonite feed. I'm just going to put this pen here because it rolls. I'll come back to that. I always thought this was an ebonite feed too, but I now understand that this is actually a plastic feed. Um, that they, they, I think they, they coat in Arushi or something, if, if that even. In any case, uh, as I understand it, it's not an ebonite feed. In any case, I will say it has a very good flow, so I don't really have any complaints. Okay, so we have the filling system, you have the large nib. Uh, obviously, these are big pens. I love them. I think they're a great size. For the hell of it, you can even post it and then it becomes a, a, an absurd pen. I, uh, I, I think that is uh, 
that is pretty clear when you look at it this way. But you can pull this in, it works well. Now, the fun thing about the Emperor is not just the massive nib, it is also the clip. It does actually have a clip, which is not bad because that means the pen won't roll off your desk, which with the Denitrio is a risk that is always there. And that is a clipless pen. At least this is the clipless version. What I would like to point out, because a lot of people ask me about this, but isn't this incredibly uncomfortable? I don't find it uncomfortable at all. I have used Indian pens that are this size and that sometimes are even fatter that I have found a bit uncomfortable. This section tapers quite severely and makes, in my mind, for a very comfortable pen. Now, having said that, if you have tiny hands, this is probably not your pen, right? Let's be fair, it's probably not your pen. Then we have the Denitrio Genkai. There is also a Ko Genkai, which is a smaller version of the Genkai, if, you, if this is a bit too much for you. Very nice, very simple cap, just a cylinder, right? And then you have a section, and in this pen too, I find the section very comfortable. It's a very pleasant pen to hold and write with, even for longer periods of writing. Unlike the Emperor, you can actually not post the Genkai. So, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily post the Emperor, also because the Urushi, I don't know if it will damage it in the long run, but also because it is clearly a massive pen to begin with, I, don't, I really don't think you need to post this pen. The uh, Genkai requires no posting. Uh, same way, it's a large pen that does not require that. And again, a very comfortable pen. So, let's have a look at the two pens side by side. Let's start with the Emperor. Now, the Emperor's nib is a little, a little interesting because it is a broad nib. However, I bought this pre-owned. Actually, Aziza gave this to me, I should say, but it was pre-owned. And I think I bought it from the one-man pen show, Sarge Minhas. And I, uh, well, actually, <laughs> Aziza did. Um, he said the, the previous owner must have stubbed the nib, and it doesn't need feel that way. In fact, it even looks a tiny, tiny bit oblique. However, whoever did this did a very nice job. That does mean there is some line variation. The ink here is um, Tsutsuji. No, wait, uh, I always have Tsutsuji in it. No, the ink is Star Ruby, Edelstein Star Ruby. Okay. You see that, that line variation, uh, which is a bit, oh, let me actually open this, um, which, which is indeed a bit oblique-like. Just a lovely pen to write with. I mean, they are very, very expensive, but the, the, the quality is there, and once you hold one, you'll see why it's so much fun. Um, it's massive. There's no two ways about it. I think there was a skip there. But it's a beautiful writer. Nice and wet and, and, and really, really pleasant to use. Okay, the Genkai is not quite 2000 US. I think this one sold for about 1500 US. I got this one from Brian Greer at Chatterley Luxuries. Um, yeah, nice, nice man, dangerous man makes you want to buy things. So here we have the Denitrio Genkai, same ink of course for the comparison and this is a broad nib uh, but this broad is, is unaltered. Actually I should not say that um, I found it a little skippy when I got it and um, Salmon from the Toronto Pen Company gave it a tune-up, so although it is not ground, it has been tuned a little bit. Same ink, right? The Star Ruby, I said that. Got a bit of a skip there. Two lovely, lovely pens. So, do I like them? Absolutely. Do I have them inked up all the time? No, not really. I have to be in the mood for it. They're both massive pens and that comes with certain challenges. So, one challenge is 
A standard pen pouch will not work. You'll need something special for these. So I have some options. Uh, this is a pouch, uh, a custom pen case that was made for me by Van der Speck in the Netherlands. And um, this works perfectly, right? Pens fit in easily. I mean, there's a lot of space. The, power, the, the case could even have been a little smaller, but I like to use it this way. I just put them in and they're protected. Another nice thing about this is Arushi is a little light sensitive. So this way the pens are pretty much <clears throat> entirely shielded from light, which, which is nice. Uh, the final thing that I will point out is um, this is a very nice pen case made by Morgan Esquire. Um, he made that for me for the Genkai. Kind of, he sent me a part to review and he, made, he threw this in, he made it especially for me. Um, and he kind of had to go by the measurements, I guess, on my website or something, but look what a great job he did, because that's a perfect fit. So often what I do is I actually end up using this case, and the reason for that is that it's just one pen. Carrying something like this is massive, this takes up a lot of space, and I do have a few oversized pens, but it's just really, really big. So often I actually use this and I find it very pleasant and, and comfortable to use. So. Um, Thank you again for making this, I really appreciate it. But there are options, but if you buy a large pen, you may have to invest in a custom-made pen case. Uh, that's just how it is, because these pens are no joke, they are really, really big, right? Okay, there you have it. A fountain pen shootout with two massive pens. I hope this was useful, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.